two, one. We're live. What? You're, I'm supposed to make the noises first, oh, not God. you, Josh. God. God. And now everybody on the replay is going to see that stupid shit. Wow. Uh, uh, that suck. All right. Well, if you are on the replay, uh, give me a, uh, for Josh's sake, give me a hashtag replay down below or no, team, no, no, replay. Team, team replay. Team bro. replay down below. Uh, and let me know that you're here. Uh, wh- what's the thing that you say? More more engagement equals yeah, more. Yeah, the more likes, the more comments we get, the more people we can help with this message. Guys, oh. comment hashtag team replay below. I love it. I love it. So do that. Um, and I'm so excited to have Josh here. We already got two people on the live. What's up, Aaron and love Shane? It. Um, if you guys are here on the live, let us know if you have any questions along the way, but I have Josh here. We're going to be talking about mindset. Josh started from the bottom. Now he's here. Uh, God, I'm a douche for making that Drake line. Um, really? but, uh, seriously, two years ago was an Uber driver broke. I read his whole story and now he's here with a multiple six figure agency done with you agency. So it will give you a little bit of done with you and done for you. Yes. So it'll, it'll give you a little bit of a different perspective on what an agency can look like, because I know a lot of um, people in the group right now are practitioners and actually running the Facebook ads and the building the funnels and all that good stuff. But here's another way you can run it. So um, and he has a huge following. Go follow uh, him in the social media for entrepreneurs group. Um, and his lives are freaking awesome. So I just want to get that out of the way. And Josh, I will let you introduce yourself after I just introduced you. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks, Andrew, for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, guys. Uh, well, my name is Josh Forty. Andrew, when did we meet? We met like probably three months ago, maybe, if that. Two, like two months ago? A month and a half. <laughs> month and a half, two months ago, something like that. And yeah. uh, we met in Chicago, which is super, super cool. But yeah, as Andrew said, I, uh, I basically went and um, I, I have a very unique take on agencies. It's something that I think a lot of people need to be utilizing that are not utilizing it. Um, because I think the biggest thing that I saw when I got into my agency and started that was the people that had agencies, they had no time, right? They were so busy working with clients. They were so busy trying to, you know, sign new clients. And it was like, if they weren't signing new clients, they were working on current clients. But as soon as they were working on cl- new clients, they weren't having any more clients come in. They didn't have time to even breathe or sleep. And so um, that's how it was in my first agency. My background is in Instagram. And um, about two years ago, I got started. I was driving for Uber and um, well, driving for Uber. I had a job plus driving for Uber plus trying to launch my company. Fast forward about a year and a half later, we had done 4.5 million followers grown completely organically on Instagram. Um, I ended up selling that agency out to my business partner, launched a new agency with this kind of blue ocean strategy, or I should say more of a pink ocean strategy. There's, there's a little bit of red there. Um, and uh, and it's a done it's a done with you service rather than a, a done for you service, as well as we have a full service agency that um, I outsource everything. So my clients sign with me, but I actually don't run um, any of the Facebook ads. I don't run any of the lead generation services. And uh, because of that, it really allows us, and we'll dive into this in a little bit more detail. Um, but because of that, it actually allows me to get better results for my clients um, because we're able to customize um, our, um, our services specifically for the industry that they're in and hook them up with the right person for that job. So it's a really, really cool. If you guys have questions on that, feel free to comment them below. But that's a really brief recap of my story um, there <laughs> here today. That's awesome. Um, and I know a lot of people hate running the Facebook ads, hate making yeah. the sales funnels. Um, yeah. So you're coming basically in with the strategy around how they should be run their online marketing. Is that correct? Yeah, for sure. So basically what I see as kind of the, um, a, a big opportunity is, is that a lot of people struggle to get clients because there's 10,000 people out there that are trying to get, you know, sell agency services. And most of them do not have a personal brand. So what I did is I realized, Hey, if I want to be an authoritative figure, if I want clients to come to me, cause I do very little lead generation for my own. Most of my clients come to me now. Um, it didn't start that way, but I focused on growing my personal brand. And because I dedicated so much time to that, I had to figure out on the back end, how do I manage clients without having to do tons and tons of work? And so I built up my attractive character. I built up my personal brand and that allowed clients to come to me. I paid very little to nothing for advertising for myself. Um, and then on the back end, I basically just have uh, outsource uh, uh, clients. So I have people that run different agencies. And with that, when I say it kind of allows us to 
get better services or get better results. What I mean by that is, let's say you come to me and you're a gym client, right? Like you're, you know, you run a gym, you want more leads. Well, mm -hmm. maybe I don't know, maybe I don't know gym leads, but I have a Facebook ads manager that specifically specializes in gym leads and I'll give that one to him. And then someone from the tech industry might come to me. Well, they're like, you know, who have you worked with? Well, I have another Facebook ads manager over here who does tech, the tech industry. And somebody else might come to me for a funnel. And that way I can manage and service multiple different industries. And I'm not actually having to learn everything about each particular industry. The only thing that I have to do is learn enough to close them on the sale, educate them enough about our process, and then hand them off to our specialist. I love it. And I don't know if you're willing to dig into the strategy to find your specialists, um, but I really like your strategy behind that because it's not really what people would think. Like right. you're not going to the Philippines. You're not like uh, really like emailing anybody or anything like that. Um, but would you share it with us? If you guys, if, if they, if you guys, the 32 people are on here, if you want to hear how he does it, which is kind of freaking cool, uh, drop a heart, drop a like down here uh, right now. And also, we were talking about our favorite characters from How I Met Your Mother. I would love oh, yeah. to know uh, your favorite character from How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, guys, so. comment below with your favorite character of How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> the best TV show on the planet. I love it so much. Yeah, mine was Barney. Was yours Barney? Mine's definitely Barney. I would never want to be Barney because he's a complete tool, but he makes me laugh. <laughs> I'd, I'd kind of, uh, I don't know. Barney's hilarious. Um, I love it. Awesome. We are, holy crap. We're getting a lot of hearts. That, okay. Oh, we got almost 40 freaking viewers. How you, how you doing this? You only got 3,000 members in your group. I love it. No, it's weird. Thanks for being here, you guys. Sometimes. I don't know. I'm famous. <laughs> I dude i love this group and i love how helpful everybody's in uh, in this group um every question that's asked is is answered so in the spirit of that let's answer the question um and yeah how do you find these specialists oh awesome yeah so um it's interesting because when i started so i had i had my instagram agency and we did all the work ourselves it was uh, my business partner and myself towards the end we had a couple vas but i was just like killing myself i was like i cannot do this anymore i sold my company out to him and um when i got started the the facebook ads world was a relatively new concept to me right um the facebook ads manager or facebook ads that we did run um for our agency back with the instagram agency were all done through someone that we hired and so i had kind of two options i was like i can either go out and learn a brand new skill um i had purchased dan's course i had purchased maxwell finn's course um i had a couple different courses there that i could have gone and uh done but i was like you know i understand that the learning curve there um it speeds up dramatically when you do have a course. But for me, I wasn't really passionate about Facebook ads. I just knew that people were making a ridiculous amount of money on it. And so um, a lot of the things that I, I teach in like my, my mindset coaching and my you know personal development coaching and things like that is how to utilize opportunities, how to look at an industry or something that uh, someone or something that's making money and how do you capitalize on it, um, whether or not you're the one doing the work or not. And so what I did is I realized well, the number one struggle that um, almost every agency that I ran into had was acquiring clients. And I was like, I'm really good at that, right? Like I know how to acquire leads. I know how to do sales. And so I was like, what if I just went and reached out to these people um, and uh, was like, hey, if I brought you guys clients, would you give me a better rate or like an affiliate cut um, of the actual contract? And so how I set it up was a little bit different. Um, most people, when they get started in this, is they just take an affiliate cut from the managers. So they'll just refer work over to the managers and take you know, a $200, $500 affiliate cut. I actually structured a little bit differently. I try to negotiate down to the lowest rate that I can get them. So let's say they normally charge $1,500 for their services. Um, I try to negotiate down to like $1,200 or $1,000 a month for their services for any, uh, if I were to hire them out. And so then when I go and sign clients, the client signs with me and it doesn't matter what I close them for, right? I've you know closed a client before where they were gonna do $1,000 in ad spend and $1,000 was my cost, so it was $2,000, but I closed them for $5,000 a month. 
So my profit was three grand on that client. And if I would have just gone and taken an affiliate cut, it would have only been 500 bucks, right? And so I kind of like looked around and I was like, okay, how do I get managers to want to work with me? And I just know that if I told people I could bring them work, they'd probably, want, they'd, they'd probably be interested. And so I had my Facebook group and that's where I started. Um, I posted in there and I was like, hey, who in here um, runs? And I just picked one I- uh, industry to start with. I was like, who in here runs Facebook ads for gyms and crushes it with results? And so I got some people. And then I started going into other different Facebook groups that had, um, you know, an audience in the Facebook ad space, like Facebook ad buyers and you know, like things like that. And I would post, hey, I have a client for such and such a space. I need to outsource it to somebody who does this. I didn't actually have a client at the time, but I knew that I was going to have them very quickly. <laughs> and so um, people would come to me. They're like, hey, you know, I run all these different things. And I get like three or four or five or ten people sending me messages. And so then I just set up calls with people. And I set up calls with all these agencies. And I just said, all right, what are your services? What's your current rate? What's your turnaround time? Who is your preferred client? Right. And I got all that information and I made out this spreadsheet that had all these different lists of people on it. And then I was like, all right, cool. I have six different industries that I can pull from fitness, gym or fitness and gyms, chiropractors, dentists, doctors, tech, um, personal development, finance and the MLM space. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, all right, I got Facebook ads managers. And then I went out and found some funnel builders because mm-hmm. um, I knew if they had a crappy funnel on the back end that all the Facebook ads in the world wouldn't solve that problem, right? Mm-hmm. And so um, did the same thing for the funnel builders. And so we built out this list and I, and I established this relationship with them. And now I have an entire list and I only worked with the people that could show me proven results of their work. Yes, because that's, that's huge. But right, because a lot of people, they go and they sign these different people or they, they go with it and they're just getting started. And if you're just getting started in Facebook ads, don't feel discouraged. But like for me at the time, I was like, I don't want to work with new people, man. Like I want to work with people that have results. And so mm-hmm. um, I was very specific with that. And that's how I went out and actually found my uh, managers. And then I just have a contract in place with them that says, this is the rate that we agree upon. I will connect you directly with the client, but you cannot go direct. Um, I have to receive my affiliate cut or my, you know, my cut of whatever we sign them for each month. Mm -hmm. I love that strategy. And that's why I wanted you on here to explain everything you just explained. And I think you just gave everybody a shit ton of value um, right there. So thank you so much, man. Um, What that's actually how I found um, I've outsourced part of my agency since it's been growing so much. And my personal brand personal brand has been growing so much. So you can get to a point where you just start outsourcing it. And I found my people in Facebook groups. I think that's an amazing way to find people that actually have proven results. And everybody here I know is a part of a bunch of Facebook groups. Reach out to the people that you know that are actually producing results and just ask them if you'd like to work together together with them. Um, I love that, love, love, love that strategy. Yep, and I think the biggest thing that people, like they struggle with is is that, and I tell people this all the time. In fact, in my course, sorry, I'm going to kind of plug that I have one. Um, in my course, <laughs> no, I talk about cool. this specifically um, is, is the, the easiest way to establish credibility. Because some of my students have gone out and like tried to do this strategy. And they're like, man, I'm having such a hard time getting people to get on the phone with me, I- I- even though I want to give them work. And it's because mm-hmm. they look like their profiles look like crap. Right. They have a profile picture of their cat or of a a quote. They have a Lamborghini cover photo like this is my dream car. It's like, come on, guys. And so it's so important to establish your personal brand in this. Like you can do it without a personal brand. Don't get me wrong. But like you're going to do way more work, Mm -hmm. way more work than if you don't have a personal brand. If people don't know who you are, it's going to be a lot harder not only to sign clients, but to even find Facebook ads managers. But the thing is, is that it really doesn't take. Um, that long to be able to do it. In fact, I had a student one time, um, she, she's a senior in college, three days in to the course, she changed around a couple things that she were doing, signed a $1,750 client with a $500 a month profit retainer, three days, just by tweaking around, you know, different things of what she was doing. And I was like, you know, it's awesome, right? Like, and it's just, if you're yeah. out there and you're like looking at yourself and you're like, nobody wants to get on the phone with me or nobody's taking me seriously or nobody's replying to my posts. I'm like, well, Maybe look at your profile. Maybe you're the problem. Um, yeah. And I think that that's something that a lot of people need to realize. Yeah. I'd love, and to, also, I'd love to know questions. 
Yeah, we'll uh, we'll dig into them. Um, let's just fuck it. Let's do it right now. <laughs> um, we're gonna start from the bottom. Um, from the bottom now we're here. Ch- br- squaw. Uh, did I do that on the live? Fuck. You did, um, man. You've shit. been dropping drink all day. <laughs> uh, we got Shane here. Um, Shane is asking, where do you find these niche specific ad runners and funnel builders? So we just answered that. That was yeah, we, uh, from Facebook. Guys, comment your questions below. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have about finding managers, finding clients, uh, personal branding, um, mass exposure. We have, um, I know Andrew mentioned it at the beginning. My Facebook group right now is just shy of 30,000 members. Um, it's a year and a half old, and we haven't spent one penny in advertising on uh, on that Facebook group, which is so, so cool. That's uh, awesome. Um, here's one. Uh, can you see it on the screen? Is it not popping up? I can't see it, but I can go into Facebook. Uh, don't worry about it. I'll read it off to you. Um, uh, have you faced a situation where the person you hired out wasn't able to complete? Um, how did you rebound in that situation? Great question. Good so, question. yeah, very good question. So it's, it's, it's interesting. And this is something that um, it does happen, right? I mean, for sure, um, for sure, you have to be careful. But this is why it's so important to be able to have proven results or have your Facebook ads manager or your funnel builder show you proven results of the things that they've been able to do. Um, I actually have like a uh, ask them to send over a sheet um, with screenshots of like some people send over ad campaign results. Some people send over testimonials. Some people send over, you know, results of their inside of their click funnels. But I need to be able to actually see that they can perform a task. Um, and then I really get to know my client when I'm going there to sign a client. And I really get to know that their specific needs are. And I, my application process of working with a manager is I frame it in such a way that when I go to a manager, they're working with me. I'm not working with them. So they are, I'm like, listen, I'm going to bring you work and money. If you want this, I want to have a solid relationship with you. So I'm going to need information. Um, and that just that alone right there really, really helps cut down. Um, I've had very few people that have not been able to fulfill contracts, um, in the whole process of everything, just by having that uh, application process there. Mm -hmm. Uh, one time, there was a time when there was a fulfillment issue. We weren't able to get the results um, that were promised and we did have to issue a refund. And so we were out the money, but I do ask and have, well, one of the first questions on the interview is um, with the, with the managers. And I also have it in the contract in writing that says if the um, Facebook ads manager does not follow through on his end of the deal, or does not get the promised or desired results that we agreed upon, I'm gonna re- issue my part of the refund, but I also get my refund back from uh, the manager as well for them nice. to refund my client so that I'm not technically out any money before uh, that I was, or that I didn't have before I signed that initial client. So I think those are the two biggest things there for me. Um, and then the other thing that I also have built in, the, the biggest issue that we've seen um, which hasn't really been a huge issue for us, but the biggest one that there is, is um, we offer with our Facebook ads, how I have it structured, which is a little bit different, is we actually offer a, a guarantee for clients that are like a little bit uneasy for us to sign with. They'll be mm-hmm. like, well, how do we know you're going to get us leads with Facebook ads? And so we offer a guarantee, which says we'll run your Facebook ads campaign for one month. All right. You're, you'll sign with us. It'll be a three or six month contract or whatever it is. The first month you'll pay us up front and we will get you leads in. And then based off the number of leads that we get in on that first month, once we get our Facebook ad spend dialed in, we will come up with a number that we will guarantee you we will get you that number of leads each month or else we will refund your full amount. And Usually, like if it's a dentist or a chiropractor, that's you know around I don't know, thirty-five to forty lead mark, um, mm-hmm. depending upon ad spend. Um, and then if we're getting you know into the last five or ten days of the month, and we don't see like that we're not going to hit that number, then we'll just front some of our own cash to put it into the advertising spend and uh, pay you know a, 
use our own money to get those leads so that we don't have to refund the um, the full the full uh, spectrum of everything. So I haven't actually dealt with a lot of people that um, that haven't fulfilled orders just because my application process is so thorough. Nice, I love it. Um, and uh, going along with that guarantee. My agency has a risk aversion policy that I've pulled from Jeff Miller, which is 30 guaranteed leads, um, new customer opportunities per month, or they get their uh, next month services for free. And Perfect. we haven't had to do anything like that. Yeah. Um, so you have it in place. So you lower the barrier of buying friction with yes. your client and that lowers it way down. Um, yes. Go ahead. Yeah, and I was going to say, the number, guys, doesn't always have to be high. Like, a lot of people think that, mm -hmm. oh, you know, you have to guarantee them 50 or 75 leads in order for them to sign. The thing is, especially in sales, that you want to understand and, like, really focus on is, is – I always get them to tell me and so that I understand what the lifetime value of their client is. Yes, right? I, think so, I was going to go there. Exactly. So if, yeah. if, you, if you come to me and you say, the lifetime value of my client is $1,200, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm pitching you, I'm just going to pull the number out, $3,500 um, a month services for, for, you know, for the services. Mm -hmm. If they sign three clients, that's... $3,600 now that they've gone mm -hmm. and, and they've done that. And let's just assume mm -hmm. that we bring them good qualified leads. Their sales team sucks, right? Yep. And, you know, they close 50% or let's just say they close 30%, right? If I bring them 30 leads and they close 30% of those leads, that's 10 clients. If 10 clients, if their average lifetime value of a customer is $1,200, that's 12 grand. So you're pitching them $3,600 or $3,500 when the lifetime value that they could potentially get out of it at the bare minimum is $12,000, it's a no brainer for them. And so don't think that you have to over promise on the amount of leads. I, I steer on the, on the low side, right? We've gotten mm -hmm. clients where the guarantees 30 to 40 leads a month and we've gotten them like 70 or 80 leads, right? And they're mm -hmm. so happy about it then. And they want to resign of course, cause we're crushing it with the leads. So mm -hmm. don't, don't overthink that. Yeah. I agree, and don't leave that first meeting without a customer lifetime value. No yeah. matter how rough it is, you gotta you gotta establish that in the first meeting with your potential clients, yep. because that's where you're gonna base your 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 services, the pricing of your services off of. Um, that's yep. how you're gonna justify your prices. So I have a lot of students, including like, and me too. I run into a lot of clients that are like, I don't know my customer lifetime value. That is a big, like every freaking meeting, I would say one out of three meetings, two out of three meetings, um, there is a, a client that says, I don't know my customer lifetime value. And the way I get around that, I'm going to ask you how you do it, but I just ask them, okay, give me a rough number of how much your customers spend per month on average, just one customer. Okay, a hundred bucks. Okay, sweet, awesome, hundred bucks for that month. And then, how long, on average, do they typically stay on with you? And they'll be like, "Oh, there are some like two months, and some that are like two years." And it's like, "No, dude, just give me an average." And uh, let's say they say ten months. So you just take that a hundred for each month that they're paying you, uh, multiply it by those ten months that an average customer stays on, and then you have the customer lifetime value, which is a thousand dollars. And what I like to ask is. Mr. Customer, would you agree that your customer lifetime value is roughly a thousand dollars? And the majority of the time, the vast majority of the time, they'll say yes, that does yeah. make sense. Um, so that's how I get around that objection, and I'd love to hear what you, uh, how you get around that. Um, yeah, honestly, it depends on how much I like the person I'm on the phone with. Um, <laughs> if I don't like the person I'm on the phone with, or like I think that they're going to be a problem. If they're like, I don't even know the lifetime value of my customer, I'm just like, well, then, you know what? I actually work with people that are very serious about their business and get real results for them. So if you don't even know the lifetime value of their, your customer, I don't think we should work together. So you can contact me when you know that, um, <laughs> but, you know, basically have a nice day, right? Because I'm not going to work with yeah. something that's going to be a pain in the butt. And you find that with lower end customers, that people that don't know things like that, generally speaking, they're more of a pain than they are worth. Um, yeah. There are way too many companies out there for you to stress out about the fact that, you know, somebody's going to be a jerk or like going to be a complete pain in the butt. 
um, mm -hmm. and continue that. So if mm -hmm. I don't like the customer, I basically just go, all right, bye, click. Um, yeah. But if I do like the customer, exactly what you just said right there, which yeah. is you go, okay, what's the average number that your customer is going to spend, right? Mm -hmm. And they're going to be like, I don't know. Gyms are the, like, in my opinion, gyms are like the easiest thing in the world to figure out, right? <laughs> exactly. Like, what's the average lifetime? I don't know. Okay. Roughly speaking, how long do people come to your gym, right? <laughs> like, uh, seven months. Cool. Seven months. Yeah. Uh, how much is it uh, a month to uh, get, you know, get your gym um, or to be in your gym? 50 bucks a month. Awesome. Mm -hmm. 50 times seven, 350 bucks, I think. Yeah, 350 yeah. bucks. Lifetime yeah. value, average 350 bucks. Yeah. Now, do they buy, do you offer any upsells? Do you offer any yes. training programs? Right. Blah, blah, blah. And they're mm -hmm. like, uh, yes. All right, cool. How much? Uh, of the members of your gym right now, what percentage of those members are on an upsell? Uh, 20%. Okay, cool. So 20%. So you know that, you know, and you just take that number, you just do out the math with them um, on the phone, right? What you said. And then a lot of times, if the person's like a genuinely nice person and you like want to work with them, if you could walk with them through that process, if mm -hmm. they don't know the average value of their customer and you just showed them that, they're going to be like, holy cow. Yeah. I didn't realize one customer was worth that much to me, right? Exactly. And then they're going to want to to hire you on because now you've provided them value, not in just in the lead generation, but now you've figured out what mm -hmm. their customer is worth and they didn't even know it. Yeah. And that's another thing I want to talk about is, and what people struggle with is establishing yourself as an expert going in. Don't let your customers bully you around and tell you what offer yep. you should run and anything like that. Go in, establish yourself as the expert, because if you just read dot com secrets, like you're an expert in the fucking field. Um, it's wow. ridiculous. Just do what Russell says. Read that book. And just like I've taken so much shit from that book. The three different types of traffic, the value ladder. I explain exactly what's in that book to my clients and it establish you, establishes you as the expert. So you are able to lay the ground rules for how you're your campaign is going to run hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really important too. Um, Cause a lot of people go in and they're like, well, the client wants this, the client wants this, the client wants this. And I'm like, listen, the client doesn't know what they want. That's right. why they're hiring you. All right. Mm -hmm. The reason that they are literally on the phone with you is because there's an obvious issue mm -hmm. in what it is that they're doing. So mm -hmm. if you were to get on the phone with Russell Brunson or you were to get on the phone with Dan Kennedy or Dan Henry or Tony Robbins or me or, or Andrew or whatever, and you were to show us your game plan and we were to go, no, you should be doing this, this, and this, would you question it? If Russell Brunson told you, right, they don't know who you are. For all they know, you are Russell Brunson, right? Mm -hmm. So now all of a sudden, like if they give you pushback, go, listen, I, I, I respect that. I appreciate the fact that you think that right now this is the best layout, but here's why we do it this way. Boom, 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 boom. Do not be afraid to, and I say this very carefully, you should always agree with your customer, but don't be afraid to disagree with your customer when you say that you agree with them, right? So if they're yeah. like, well, we do it this way. Don't you think that it's a good idea? You can be like, I agree with you that that is a way to do it, right? Mm -hmm. However, consider this. Boom, boom, mm -hmm. boom. Here's why. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that that's huge. And I love sales. Um, sales is probably one of my strong suits and people tell me I should create a course on sales all the time. Um, but like, don't let your customer boss you around. Like Andrew said, you are the expert, you are in control. And the reason that you are on the phone with them is because there's an obvious problem in their business that they are trying to solve. And what they're currently doing is not working. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and one thing that a lot of my students run into and and when I was starting out, it, it was an issue at first. And it was like the uh, business owner did not want to run the offer that I was proposing because you need to have a good tripwire. You need to have a good offer online to get people from traffic that you pay for to traffic that you own. Um, and I want to know, how do you get around that? Have you seen that as an issue in your business or how have you coached some of your students through that? Um, for me, I go, if they're dead set on running the offer their way, um, I will do one of two things. I will say, okay, Mr. or Mrs. You know, business owner, we can either run the offer your way and my way at the same time as a split test and see which one works better and donate 50% and 50%. Or if we do it 100% purely entirely your way, there is a um, no refund policy. 
So mm-hmm. you cannot ask for your money back. There is no refunds allowed because we are doing it the way that you want it done and not the way that I know is proven to work. And so we're not going to take on risk and spend our time, money and energy to do it your way. Um, if we don't know that it works only to have you come back to us and say, you did it wrong. We didn't make any money. So Mm -hmm. I either run one side by side or uh, like do it on a side by side, or I just do a a guaranteed no refund if and only if I cannot convince them to do it my way or do it the way that I think is best. And basically, I just go through and show them previous results. And you have to remember, guys, like 90 percent or more of my previous results are not my results. They're results of a specialist um, that has done it for me. So I go directly to them. And that's why I have the testimonials. That's why I have the case studies. That's why I have proven results. Because if I can show them, dude, this company is getting 93 leads a month doing it this way, do it this way. In fact, Mm -hmm. the biggest thing, one of the hardest things to get out of like dentist office is um, images. And it's like, dude, (laughs) And they of your office is going to work better than a stock image. It just yeah. like it just does. And they're like, well, just use a stock image. And I'm like, then I can't fulfill what it is that you're asking me to fulfill because and they're like, well, we don't want to take pictures of our clients or whatever. I'm like, just ask your client, hey, we're running a promotion. Do you mind if we take a picture of the dentist working on your mouth? Give them a $20 gift card somewhere. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so walk them through the process of all that and having a backup case study of things like that really, really helps. Love it. And I go all, all, over all of that from start to finish in my course, which I'm definitely plugging. Plugging. <laughs> always, plug. always Hashtag always plug. Hashtag always plug. Uh, I've got two courses too. Hashtag always plug. Hashtag um, always plug. <laughs> God, that was douchey. Um, <laughs> so Keenan and Amir are asking about getting clients specifically from cold traffic. So Keenan's question is, how do you get clients though? Uh, cold email, cold call, mostly your referrals. Amir is asking, how do you get past the gatekeeper? And I want to jump into this because the easiest way to get clients is not through those cold methods. Yes, you can get clients through those cold methods, but with Josh, he teaches how to grow a personal brand um, and just become that authority in the field. And, I, and then I focus on a solid referral program and BNI meetings and chamber of commerce and that sort of thing, because it's so much easier to close deals that way than doing anything cold. And when you're starting off cold and uh, like the business owners are getting hit up by marketers all the time, you're starting on the wrong foot with your potential customer because they are annoyed as as shit from all these marketers hitting hitting them up. But if you're referred to that business or if you meet them at a BNI meeting or a meetup or you're the authority figure in the field and they reach out to you, which is the easiest fucking deal to close, that is so much easier than doing anything cold. And I suggest to anybody, start off with a referral program, make posts on your Facebook wall, add business owners to your uh, Facebook and do all that shit before you do anything cold. Yeah, for sure. Church? Huh? Church? Church. Hashtag church. What's church? I don't know, like preach? I don't know, whatever. Preach. Yeah, um, no, I 100% agree with that. I actually have had success in cold emailing, and I, I, I'm, I'm happy to get into that if you want to. Yeah, uh, let's do it. But uh, I, I'm going to start off by just reiterating what Andrew just said. Guys, I don't do any more cold emailing pretty much um, at all for, for my company because of my brand. And I want to encourage you, your life <laughs> will be if, – if your goal is to make money and have a successful business and have clients coming to you – there is no better way than having a solid personal brand with a solid referral program. Like it just wins so mm-hmm. well. And um, the best way to do that, and I'm literally giving you paid course content right now Let's um, go. from this that I walk through screen sharing step by step by step. First thing. Hold on. Is- Hold on. If you guys are loving this and Josh is dropping the knowledge, give us some hearts and some likes down yeah. below. And Josh, For- say, say what you say about engagement and shit. Guys, the more likes, the more comments we get, the more people we can help with this message because I'm dropping fire bombs and I'm famous. So, I mean, it's cool. <laughs> Andrew's famous. I'm famous. No, I'm just kidding. But no, up the douchiness. Okay. But let's just drop guys, into the knowledge bomb. Yeah. The let's more- go, Josh. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so 
get into Facebook groups. You, you get 5,000 friends on Facebook. Use it, right? Like go mm -hmm. into Facebook groups, find what, what I tell people, which is, and this is a huge value bomb right here. Okay. So please pay attention to this. This in and of itself could sign you, land you a $10,000 contract. I'm not kidding. Go out and find an influencer or find someone that you want to model after. Okay. And find someone that puts out similar content that has the customers in your space of your ideal customer. Maybe it's a Facebook group, maybe it's an influencer or whatever that is. And then whenever they go and post, turn on their post notifications. When they post something that you like, like, or that something similar to what you would post, or ha like they're posting a post where clients are commenting, go friend request every single person that likes and comments on their stuff every single time. Max out that mm -hmm. 5,000 friend request because now you're building an audience around stuff that you're going to be posting anyway, specifically talking to those type of people and you're bringing them to you by sending them friend requests and then have a really solid referral program to say, Hey, I do this. If anybody knows of these services, I pay out ridiculous cash commissions. It's on the spot. Boom, boom, boom. You get it 30 days after we sign. So that, you know, there's a guarantee of no refund. Don't just say it actually make out like a PDF document of, uh, like your referral program and the different percentages and the different things there, because that mm -hmm. will super, super crush. And so mm -hmm. guys, like <laughs> having a personal brand is the best job in the freaking world. People come to you, like they want to give you money. I have people that literally go on my live streams and on my posts and tell me they're like, Josh, please check your messages. I want to work with you. Josh, I have a client for you. Please reply to me, right? I never have to do cold lead generation ever again because of it. And mm -hmm. so um, that's very, very powerful. So kudos, Andrew, right, right to what you said. Um, mm -hmm. And as far as cold emailing is concerned. Yes, let's get into it. Okay, cold emailing is fun um, because you get 200 no's for every like one to three yeses. But mm -hmm. believe it or not, like when you do get a response from a cold email, that's usually a pretty qualified lead, right? Because you know that they're desperate enough or that they want it bad enough to reply to someone they've never met before who's literally pitching them in the very first email that they sent. Mm -hmm. right? um, I use um, a, a software tool to get um, lead generation um, for, uh, I have basically a software tool that does unlimited leads, and we talk about that in the course, um, unlimited leads in any industry in any city. And so I target by city, by location. It will give me the name, contact information, phone number, email address, everything of every business in the industry in that city. I take that and I upload it and I use um, uh, a cold email um, software called woodpecker.co. Mm -hmm. um, I upload that list into Woodpecker and blast them out there. I send 50 emails a day um, and I make sure that it's coming from an at Josh 40 consulting or at whatever business um, email address it is. Do not send it from a Gmail or a Yahoo because they will not reply. Um, and then I have found in my personal experience, the shorter and sweeter directly to the point, the message, the better. Um, mm -hmm. And basically I just go, you know, I'll, I'll use a subject line of like, you know, 50 new patients this month or um, uh, new appointment for services, like, you know, something along the lines of that, something that's a little bit catchy. And then just tell them right in there, be like, hey, um, I, you know, we specialize in blah, blah, blah. Would, uh, you know, you be, could you, you handle an extra 30 to 40 new clients every single month? We guarantee our results. Let's chat, right? Mm -hmm. um, make it to where they know that they're being pitched. Don't try to hide the pitch because then they're going to get super, super pissed off. And then, <laughs> uh -huh. right? Like they might not have to know. You don't have to tell them how you do what you do or what specifically that you do, but make mm -hmm. sure that they understand that, hey, this is not like you don't have a family with 45 kids that you're all trying to give them, you know, gym memberships to, right? Like <laughs> probably not likely. Um, yeah. but sending those out, Woodpecker allows you to automate it like that, just so that mm -hmm. they come in, the replies go right back to your email inbox. And then I just get them on the phone and take them through the process. And I really recommend having some form of PDF or flow sheet. That is a visual understanding that goes, okay, from the time I sign with you to the time I start seeing clients, what's the process? Because mm -hmm. when they can visualize it, it makes things a lot easier. Um, and so I honestly, cold emailing is as much as a lot of people think it's dead. Like I've made <laughs> tens of thousands of dollars, um, from cold mm -hmm. emailing 
um, just there. But once again, they are a harder sell than if they come to you, which is what the personal brand allows you to do. Actually, um, mm -hmm. I have a whole entire module in my course called the $10,000 a month module that um, breaks down that cold email strategy and shows you, because I didn't have a huge personal brand when I got started. And I actually did 10K in my first month purely off of cold email. I love it. Um, and how long are your cold emails? I, I, I love the answer to this. And what are your uh, subject lines? What's your favorite subject or what was your favorite subject line to use? Um, let's set up a meeting works pretty well. Um, it also, like it really depends upon your industry. you got to split test in your industry. Like what mm -hmm. works for dentists is going to work different for gyms, is going to work different for people that want swimming pools, that, that we people that want, you know, whatever. And also... The thing I want to say before I dive into that real quick is that don't just think that you have to target what, you know, Dan Henry will call the low hanging fruit. There's nothing wrong with those people, but like guys, there are companies out there in solar and in swimming pools and in, you know, putting new roofs on houses and mm -hmm. car repair that the average value of their customer is like, you know, 35 grand, right? Mm -hmm. 55 grand. So like if you find someone that has the average customer who if they sign a customer, it's $35,000 and you're like, I'm going to bring you 20 qualified leads a month. Like if they close five of them and it's a $50,000, you know, thing that's, that's $250,000. If you're charging them $10,000 a month, that ain't squat. Right. Mm -hmm. So think about that as well. Just don't go for the low hanging fruit um, and split test your industries. I like, mm -hmm. let's set up a meeting. I like um, uh, new appointment schedules. Um, I like, I'm trying to think of some of the old ones that I used. I have a list. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a list of, um, uh, how many appointments can you handle this week or something like that? Or nice. do, you have, oh, do you have, do you have openings this week? Um, and then nice. in the email, I'll say something, Hey, um, was cu uh, curious if you could handle an extra 30 to 40 leads this month. Um, not sure if you're already booked up for the month or not. But if you are and do have openings, I'd love to help you fill them, right? Mm -hmm. um, and now that gets people thinking to be like, well, if we have openings, well, I guess we might as well fill them. So <laughs> rather if you come out with them, you know, if they're in the middle of everything, 10,000 different things, and they think, oh, man, I don't really, we don't really need more leads. But if you come at them with the thing that says you have open time, you can make more money with it, mm -hmm. um, that usually gets their attention um, there as well. I love it. Um, and on my end, the what I teach is for the subject line, make it something that they really, really want and what piques their curiosity. Yeah. So like gyms don't necessarily want like just more members, but if you pitch it as more personal training members, then in your subject line, it's more intriguing for them to um, hit on and uh, the curiosity is piqued. Um, like so really ready to buy leads, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than just leads. Would you rather yeah. have ready to buy leads, things like that? Um, that's another good one there. Exactly. Just think about the one thing that they want in their industry and like the highest point on their value ladder and say, this is what I can get you. So yeah. optometrists, they don't want more uh, like eye appointments. They want more LASIK where they're getting $3,000, $4,000 Mine was $2,000 because I bought it on Groupon um, and it worked perfectly. LASIK was like the best thing I ever fucking did in my life. But yeah, you never got LASIK? No, I need to though. I've terrible eyes. Yeah, bro. It's awesome. Um, we have, a f oh, okay. Here's a good question from uh, Oathman. Um, how do you avoid cold email going to their spam folder? <laughs> I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Like, I don't really know. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I just send out 50. Uh, I have heard. And in my experience that the more emails I send out, the higher likeliness of a chance that it's going to go to spam. Mm -hmm. um, when I do my cold email scraping and if, you know, if I get lists or anything like that, I try to look for names that uh, are names on emails. So rather than info at, you know, your smile dental.com i try to look at for you know sally at my smile dental.com or jordan at my smile dental.com um and that really helps um and then in woodpecker i just don't send out more than 50 a day that's what they recommend um for it not you know not going to spam and i just i just honestly I just test i test headlines um you'll know 
if like one goes and like every single one goes to spam and one doesn't go to spam because you can track open rates. And mm. most of the time, if it doesn't go to spam, they will open it. Um, and so if you're getting a ton of open rates, but not a lot of replies, more than likely it's not going to spam. It's just your message. But if you're not getting any open rates at all and you've tried three or four different types of headlines um, or like subject lines, then, um, then you're probably going to spam. But I also, guys, I don't just send one email. I have a three-day um, sequence. So in Woodpecker, you can set this up there. Um, I should really <laughs> have it <affiliate> for them. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, in Woodpecker, you can set up like multiple lengths. And so the first day, I have it set up to go to everyone. The second day, it goes out to everyone that hasn't replied. So if I've gotten any replies, obviously, it's not going to go out to them again. But my second one is basically an email that says, um, this is not what it says, but this is the type of message that I'm trying to tell them is, hey, mm -hmm. I see that you got my first email. Um, just wanted to make sure that you were able to look over that. If you have any questions, let's have a time to get on a call. Um, that's my second email. If I only have a three email campaign, sometimes I do four, but most of the time it's three. My last mm -hmm. email is a polite way of saying, okay, fine. If you don't want to work with me, bye. Right. <laughs> um, and so I go and I just say, Hey, look, we are looking to, to fill some spots here. We're absolutely crushing it with results right now. And we only have about two. We only have, you know, maybe like two left. So I'm going to remove you from this list. And this will be the last time you'll ever be able to get these services, which will really help blow up and expand your business and blah, 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 blah at this amazing rate. So unless I hear from you, goodbye forever, basically. Um, and then just take them off the list and don't send them any more emails. And you would be amazed that when you play hardball with your customers, um, how many of them will actually be like, okay, 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 let's talk, right? Like, let's get on the phone with you. Um, mm -hmm. And so, like, that's my my follow sequence there. And then just testing. You'll know mm -hmm. once you get into it. Um, you'll you'll figure it out pretty quick. And that's another thing. Can mm -hmm. we just pause real quick for one second? Like. <laughs> Like I saw your post the other day if you're like, if you're 20, you know, in your twenties and you know, don't have debt or whatever, and you hate your job, like quit your job, right? Quit like, your fucking job. Yeah. Quit your freaking job. Right. Like, like, like guys, like y'all are so scared to like, like you wanted to work the first time. Like, mm -hmm. like, like what? Like it didn't work for me the first time. It didn't work for me the second time or the third time or the fourth time or the fifth time, but eventually it worked. And now I live an amazing life. And I think mm -hmm. so many people, they're like, well, how do I do this? I sent out one email and it didn't work. I'm mm -hmm. like, and I, I was growing Instagram accounts for seven months before I hit my first 50,000 followers. And then mm -hmm. I did 4.5 million. And so yeah. I would just say, like, when you're into this, get a good course. I strongly, mm -hmm. strongly, strongly believe in courses. I love Andrew's mm -hmm. course, um, especially on bots. If you're looking for a bot course, get Andrew's. If you're looking for a personal branding, outsourcing and funnels course, I mean, I'm obviously going to want to plug mine, but find one, whether it's whatever industry that you want to get into and mm -hmm. just follow every single step that they tell you to do. And if in three months from now you've done that and you've spent, you know, a thousand or two thousand dollars and you haven't seen any results, then maybe you consider the fact that maybe it doesn't work or that mm -hmm. you need to adjust some things. But don't just mm -hmm. be like, I wanted to go the very first time because mm -hmm. you're probably not going to. Absolutely. And, and seriously, the more you fail, the more you learn. And the only you're only going to get better from there. Yeah. Um, and absolutely. The thing about courses is just follow it to a T. Do not buy like a crap ton of courses on different subject matter and have your just like wheels spinning in so many different areas. Yep. Um, and I say actually, two max. Yeah. Yeah, in the same area. Yep, in the same um, space. And actually, we got to end things here. I've got a group call with my stupid simple client acquisition course. Got and it. I actually want to ask you, um, would you mind doing like an exclusive module in stupid, uh, not module, a video in stupid simple client acquisition since you basically just killed it right here with uh, oh, guys, and just put me on the spot in front of 43 people. I guess I can do it. That's fine. Hey, <laughs> there we go. I'll do a bots video in your course. Let's do it. I, lo I love that. Let's do that. Boom. Let's do it, you guys. Like you're saying, get a course, learn something, take it to heart, and just put 
the action into it. We didn't get too much into the mindset on this call. Um, so we'll probably do another interview just talking about strictly mindset because Josh is, he has a module in his course on strictly mindset and it's just, uh, no pun intended, mind blowing. Um, God, that sucks. Why'd I say that? Um, (laughs) Hey guys, if you want to learn more about this, um, social media for entrepreneurs, uh, is the name of the group. Um, I'm going to shamelessly plug that only because you didn't mind here. So, um, <laughs> for entrepreneurs uh, is the group. We're almost at 30,000 members. Um, search that group there. You can find all the information about uh, a lot of what we're doing in there. We got some really cool stuff, and we're actually doing a big push right now um, mm-hmm. for mindset just because at Funnel Hacking Live and a lot of things that we were doing there, just so many people just are struggling with that. So, a lot of cool stuff there. But I know you got to run, so I won't keep you yeah. long. Yeah. And Josh, throw your link down below so everybody can click it to, uh, to your group. Um, and guys, Josh dropped a lot of value bombs in here. If you absolutely loved it, give it a heart, give it a like, uh, uh, comment your favorite thing that you learned um, in this interview. That will be helpful for everyone. Um, I just want to thank everybody for being here. There were 43 viewers pretty much the whole time, which is fucking thank awesome. Thank, thank you guys for being so engaged. And uh, Josh, thank you for just uh, dropping all your knowledge that you have, man. You didn't hold back. Not at all, man. Never do. All right, man. Take it easy. Love it. See you, buddy. Bye. Computer so slow.